Uh, hi everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Zakaria Mwindi. Uh, as you can see on the presentation, uh, supposed to be Joshua Ogure, but he couldn't make it uh, to be with us because of other reasons. So I'm just stepping in uh, for him. We work together at Map Tibera. So in this presentation, I'll be sharing about the work that we've been doing uh, with the county government, uh, introducing them to open source tools, uh, such as OpenStreetMap and also Kobo Collect for data collection. Yeah, so some background about the uh, about uh, public participation uh, process in Kenya. So in 2010, after many years of trying to work on our uh, constitution, we finally uh, promulgated uh, uh, a new constitution that uh, with the new constitution came with a new devolved system of government. So we now had a national government, and then we also had the county government. So currently uh, there are 47 of them. So each county government has like a gov the structure of government is we have a governor, then we have a, uh, we have senate, then members of county assembly. So the other thing that also came with, uh, with that system of government is that uh, one it also introduced devolved uh, the resources who are now being are going to be devolved. So in, instead of just waiting on the national government, each county had like uh, their own system of government where the, some of the resources and services were going to be devolved. So the other thing is uh, it also brought in uh, another aspect, which is uh, public participation. So from the Constitution, uh, it's mandated that 30% of the budget that's being allocated by the, uh, the county government, 30% of it has to undergo what we call part uh, public participation. So that means annually when the government, uh, county government are preparing the financial uh, plan for the year, they have to hold what you call uh, public participation where they call in the members of public and they have to identify the projects that they would like to, uh, to be implemented by the county government. So annually we usually have that, those meetings that are conveyed in different uh, ward levels within the county. And some, these are some of the foundations for public participation. One, it enhances uh, transparency in how the, government, uh, the county government is uh, using the resources and the finances. Uh, then also introduces accountability. So if everything is made public and the, and the public are also in, are involved in the process, then it enhances uh, some sense of accountability. And then also again, there's that aspect of participation. So initially, with the, the previous form of government, everything was decided by the, uh, by the national government, so we didn't have any participation from the public. But now with this uh, system of uh, where the budget has to go through public participation, then it brings in the citizen in the process of uh, resource allocation and also planning for the budget for, for the county. So World Bank has been supporting the counties uh, in what uh, is referred as public, uh, pub, uh, participatory budgeting. So it's basically the same process, but now in some of the counties, uh, the, uh, the World Bank has been helping them to come up with guidelines and ways on how to engage the, the public uh, in this process. So in Kenya, so far, they've worked in Makweni, Baringo, uh, West Pokot, Kwale, and El Marakwet. So those are the, uh, the pilot counties that they have been working with. And so the challenge now came in that when, during these meetings, when they will convene the meeting, in one of the county, Makweni, uh, they will draw the, when they are doing, uh, they are identifying the projects, they used to ha use like flip charts. So that's why they will draw like uh, which products they like, they like to be implemented. But now the challenge was with, flip, uh, with the uh, flip charts, that means that once the meetings are over, the, uh, the county government officials take the maps back to the office, and after a year, either the maps are torn or they are misplaced in one way or another. So that pro uh, proved to be a challenge because there, was a, there wasn't like consistency. So when they come again in the next meeting, 
uh, when they are de identifying the projects, they will still end up either identifying the same same projects uh, in, because they didn't have like any any reference to what they had suggested previously. And also in these meetings, they are supposed to vote for which are priority projects. So if they didn't have that uh, somewhere documented, then it, it it proved to be a challenge. And that's where now Mapkibira came in. Uh, to assist now the, count, uh, the counties to digitize their projects and generate maps that could be used uh, in these meetings. So the maps uh, will end up uh, going to the field, uh, map the projects, and then create like uh, printed maps that they will be used in these meetings for them to identify what is already existing and to also identify uh, suitable locations for new projects. And then also it will inform them when they are choosing those projects instead of uh, identifying say, almost similar projects within uh, their areas, they can now see if in this place we have a hospital or a dispensary uh, and maybe there's a river, then what we need to opt, uh, choose the next time is maybe we can decide, maybe uh, we need the government to uh, maybe mo uh, renovate the roads so that people can be able to access uh, those dispensaries. So these are some of the projects. Uh, so the one on the on the left is a border border shed that was uh, built by the county and then we have classrooms also on the right these are some of the pro projects that were being uh, implemented by the county government so we have uh, the ones that have gone through the public participation but you also have the flagship projects uh, which are like key projects uh, being done by the county so why map on osm uh, when you are going to the government, uh, the county government, one of the challenges that you've realized is uh, when you're introducing such uh, tools, there's usually that tendency where they feel like either they are, their job is going to be taken away or some of them feel like uh, they're going to be relevant. So there was that need to explain uh, in details like how these tools will enhance the work that they are doing and complement whatever. Uh, work they're doing in different departments because you also realize that uh, with many departments there was that uh, there was no proper coordination you know how each department were doing their work so you'll find like one department didn't know exactly like a GIS department uh, didn't, were not sharing the work that they are doing with the other, other departments so when you are bringing them together that's when most of them are also realizing so you guys have this and you've been looking for this we are reaching out to the national government to get these things, but it's yet it's just close to us. So one, it really helped to coordinate the, the different departments. So uh, the OSM data, will one, will serve as a base map. So those who are working on maps, they can easily just uh, use the map as, uh, as a base map. Then they integrate the different data uh, that they have into the map. and to create like uh, better maps for that could serve the county. And then also visualization. The, uh, the map will show uh, the distribution of the facilities that are within the county, both projects that have been done by the county, but also other map features that have been mapped, like points of interest within the, within the county. And then it will also help in planning uh, for finance and budgeting. Uh, it will help the citizens to track uh, projects that have been allocated and to also for them to, uh, to see in the next uh, when they're planning for the next uh, projects to get to know how to plan better on where to to set up new projects and then uh, accessibility of the data to all the other departments as I mentioned there was that uh, disconnect so every department will have like a one centralized place where they can get all this information and then for the monitoring and evaluation department, they can also use this map to monitor and evaluate the project's pro progress as it's going on. Then, of course, this is to sell the idea to the, the county on why they need the map, but also we also are trying to emphasize on the need of engaging also the citizen. So why engage the citizens? Citizens make projects using a participatory budgeting processes and they can make informed, if, uh, informed decision if they take part. So what you realize is uh, in those meetings also, uh, most of the people that will attend those meetings are more the elderly, 
and there was no room for the for the youths. Uh, in most of those communities also, they don't acknowledge. Uh, you're not allowed to sit in those meetings if you're a young person. And also another thing that we realize, uh, women also don't have a place in those meetings, but with time, uh, we are seeing more counties uh, allowing women to come in and to give their opinion. But the setup is a bit different, so the women will be set, uh, will be separated uh, to sit on one side and the other men to sit on the other side. So uh, there was that need to engage the citizen and everyone to air their, their issues and propose what I uh, thought they would be uh, best fit for them. Then engaging the citizen will also make it easy for uh, mapping the, uh, the wards and the areas where the projects are. Instead of having the county staff going to the field, they can engage the youths to do the data collection. So they, because they come from, most of them come from those areas, it's easy to manage them and to just ask them if there's any need to update a map or collect information, they can always reach out to them and they can go to the field and get the data. Then they can also help in tracking the progress of the projects. So in this project, what we're also, also doing was just getting feedback from the, comi uh, from the community, and most of these users are really helpful with that, because they're also coming from the, from the area. They were also helping to give uh, the, the assessment. So they will say whether they feel like the project is in good shape. Uh, they will also identify like whether the, the amount of money that was allocated for that project has been really been uh, used to, how, how it's supposed to, to be used. Then we're also taking photos, so it can also help in showing the status of the project. Then also the youth will be, uh, will help to bridge the gap uh, between the administration and other citizens because they are the more uh, energetic ones so they can be able to run around if there are any information that is coming from the county that they, uh, either their parents can't be able to access it. And maybe using platforms such as WhatsApp and other social media, they can help to bridge that gap between the administration and the, and the other citizens. So, so once we had engaged the county and explained why, why they need to use this platform uh, to, to complement the work that they are doing. We started the process of uh, data collection. So on the left, you can see some of the youths crossing the river to access some of the points of interest. As I mentioned, you see this uh, like another challenge. So one project is on one side uh, of the river and the other one is on this side. So in such places, it's even better to have someone uh, instead of building a lot of water points and health facilities, one of the key things that they can do in these such areas is just to build a bridge, which will be, uh, help people to access one area to the other. And then it happened that also that at that time, it was a rainy season, so that's why you're seeing most of them also crossing the, uh, the river to get to the other point. So that was the, uh, data collection, then we did data entry, uh, and in all, the picture on the right, that's uh, some of the community members during those meetings where now they were in, uh, looking at the map. So once we created the map, we took it back to, to the community uh, during those meetings and they were able to look at it, see what has already been done, what is still uh, lagging behind. And we had like, we had like, in one of the county, we had like a heated discussion on, because the, pro the county was displaying like one of the projects was complete, yet in the app on the uh, uh, in the uh, on the actual ground, things are not even progressing. The project had completely stalled. So they were really que asking questions: Why, why are you why are you putting this as a complete project yet uh, the project has not been co even even commenced? Li leave alone uh, ongoing. It hasn't commenced. So this also en enhances that communication and engagement between the public and the and the county staff. So they were able to ask questions, and I think by the time we were leaving, they got some good response, and we are hoping by then, by now, uh, the project has already uh, kicked off, or in this case, uh, almost complete. Then the other challenge that we also realize in such communities is access to internet, and if you have this information just only uh, online, 
or in unprinted maps, that means we also leave out a lot of a lot of the people from that community. So one of the strategies that we employ as Map Kibera is we also do murals uh, with the information and place them in strategic places within the community where people can be able to access this information and interact with it. Yeah, so this is Joshua, who is supposed to present, uh, giving a uh, sharing back with the, the members of the public uh, during one of the participatory uh, meetings. Then this again, the community uh, interacting with the maps uh, after he had completed it. So here are some of the sources. Uh, uh, we have documents, some public participatory framework by the World Bank. Then uh, what are the requirements? A legal framework that has been placed by the government uh, in regards to public participation. Then we also did a blog uh, explaining in details uh, the work that we did in the county. Thank you so much. Yeah.